All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome if you are new. Thank you for taking time out of your day to check the video out. We have more PlayStation news, rumors, and leaks to go over and cover here today. So we're just going to get right into the topics, starting with the possibility of Sony making a relatively big announcement in just a couple of days. We're talking about CES 2024. It's happening on January 8th. I did inform everybody that Sony officially announced they will be present at CES and they will have stuff to show off. We also talked about how PlayStation has had a bigger presence at CES in recent years. The past couple of years, Sony focused on a few different things, mainly PlayStation VR 2 because CES is where these tech companies get together to show off their cutting edge uh, latest and greatest technologies. And so when people heard that Sony was going to be at CES 2024 and they kind of thought, well, hey, PlayStation's likely going to be there. The first thought that popped into their mind is they're going to reveal the PS5 Pro. And this is something that I've been seeing a lot of PlayStation fans uh, speculating and talking about. And I want to say that the logic is there, right? The PS5 Pro is going to be the latest and greatest technology when it comes to PlayStation 5 hardware. And there have been so many rumors, all signs are pointing to this console being real and releasing sometime in 2024. However, we also need to pay attention to the fact that the rumors indicate a holiday 2024 launch for the PS5 Pro. That means basically at the end of this year, likely around September, October, November, that time frame. Now with that in mind, it's incredibly unlikely that Sony is going to talk about the PS5 Pro at CES 2024. The biggest reason for this is simply because they don't want to deter anybody from going out and buying the PlayStation 5 model that's on store shelves right now. If Sony comes out in just a couple of days and talks about this PS5 Pro, knowing that they're not going to be releasing it uh, for basically almost another year, it's going to cause quite a few people who were thinking about buying a PS5 or thinking about upgrading to one to just sit back and say, you know what, I'll just wait. And it could potentially hurt Sony sales. Now, obviously, I would love to hear about the PS5 Pro as soon as possible. I would love for Sony to come out at CES and officially announce it and talk about it. You know, maybe even get some kind of presentation from Mark Cerny, right? Uh, one can dream, but... I just don't think that's going to happen. And so I wanted to be sure to kind of talk about this and update you guys on the CES situation because I did tell you uh, that Sony will likely have some type of small PlayStation presentation, but it's not going to be anything significant. Nothing on the uh, same scale as a showcase, certainly not, and not even on the same scale as a state of play, but there could be a little something there. However, the PS5 Pro is something I am absolutely not anticipating to see in the next couple of days. So, you know, maybe a little bit of a letdown for anybody who is really hoping. And who knows, I could somehow turn out to be wrong on this one. It would be quite the surprise. A welcome one at that. But yeah, had to be sure to update you guys on this. But we're going to move on to the next topic here, which is an update from Hideo Kojima on Death Stranding 2. This is being reported by PlayStation Lifestyle. They say Hideo Kojima has provided a brief development update on Death Stranding 2 as part of his New Year's message. From the sound of things, fans will have to wait a bit to see more of the game and get a release date as there's still some voiceover work yet to be started. Kojima revealed that Death Stranding 2 is still wrapping up Automated Dialogue Replacement, or ADL for short, uh, following which uh, the development team will start recording Japanese voiceovers. Kojima added that he wants to concentrate on making games and limit traveling, but that seems nearly impossible because he's tied up in quite a few projects, including the Death Stranding movie. And so if you follow Hideo Kojima on Twitter, he talks about all of these different projects that he's working on, and it is a lot. It actually seems quite daunting. I imagine he's having a tough time juggling all of this stuff and keeping everything on track and organized but it is nice to get this update on death stranding 2 it i think lets us know that the game is not going to be releasing this year and that it's likely going to release at the earliest sometime in 2025 it sounds like there's still a pretty decent amount of work left to uh, finish up on the game 
I don't know exactly like how far along the game actually is in development based off of what he's saying here. But from what I've read, it sounds like the mocap work and stuff like that is finished. So yeah, maybe not quite at the polishing stage yet, but well on their way to getting there. Um, you know, we'll have to just kind of, again, remain patient and wait for Hideo to give us a new trailer when he's ready to do so. But there you go, a small update on Death Stranding 2. Moving on to the next topic, we are talking once again about this Horizon MMO that's in development. This is being reported by Push Square. They say here that fans of Gorilla's ever-growing Horizon franchise might be pleased to learn that the long-rumored MMORPG spin-off project Skyline seems to still be in active development. They might be less thrilled to discover there's nothing to suggest that it's actually coming to the PS5 outside of it being a Horizon game, expected to launch on PC and mobile in 2025 at the earliest. That's according to video game researcher Kerr Casis, who compiled a bunch of compelling tidbits and posted them to Twitter and subsequently was picked up by Eurogamer. Kerr Casis posts that the project started in 2021 using former NCSoft employees' resumes on LinkedIn and Facebook to construct a timeline and that 140 people worked on it as recently as September of 2023. Further, we get a potential name as well as a logo, courtesy of the company's domain registration records, Land of Salvation. Kurakasia shows a job description highlighting the skills the company is seeking and glaringly indicates that the game is currently only being developed for PC and mobile. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it won't come to PlayStation. We'd be shocked if it didn't. It's just that a port for the platform isn't something being worked on right now. And so, yeah, this is something that I did see people talking about, and that is the fact that there is no indication that this Horizon MMO is um, coming to PlayStation 5. And it sounds kind of crazy, right? Because it's like a project this big, it sounds pretty significant. It's been worked on for a long time. I mean, it sounds almost ridiculous that it wouldn't release on PS5 when you consider that the overwhelming majority of the Horizon fan base is on the PlayStation console. So I don't believe this isn't coming to PS5. It kind of does sound like maybe they are just prioritizing PC and mobile first, and then they're going to port it over to the PS5. Or maybe, and I think this is important to bring up, Gorilla is going to help them bring it over to the PS5 because as far as I know, Gorilla has been working on some type of multiplayer project since 2018. In fact, the individual who is directing that project, I'm assuming they still are, his name is, I believe, Simon LaRouche. He was hired by Gorilla in 2018 to work on whatever this game is. And it, it's hard to say, right? Like we, we know that Sony's plans change and that these games that were in development could end up getting shelved. We saw that recently with The Last of Us multiplayer. We heard about that with apparently Insomniac's multiplayer game that they were working on. So that could definitely be a possibility maybe it just wasn't coming together and so they kind of handed it off horizon that is to ncsoft um, i can't imagine that this is the same game that's been worked on since 2018 because i mean that development timeline is kind of insane but maybe it is it's it's hard to say so yeah this is just a little update i wanted to give you guys i i do assume that this game will make its way to ps5 if it doesn't that will honestly be really strange i don't i don't know why they would end up doing it that way but we are going to move on to the next topic here, which is talking a little bit more about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. This is being reported by PlayStation Lifestyle once again. They say here the next part of the epic Final Fantasy VII remake is coming in 2024 with Rebirth, and it's set to bring at least one big change from the original. Sephiroth had a much larger presence in 2020's Final Fantasy VII Remake than he did in the same portion of the original game. And with Rebirth set to cover the middle section of the game, the promise of more Sephiroth than before has been made by producer Yoshinori Katase. Speaking to Game Informer, Katase talks about the game's world map and how it will contain a greater presence from Sephiroth as the group pursues him across the map. Remake covers your encounter with Sephiroth and now within Rebirth, we wanted to make Sephiroth this very clear antagonist and target for the characters to go and pursue through their journey in Rebirth. Within the original game, Sephiroth was not seen very much in the world map, but in this title, we put this element 
forward. There will be plenty of character development for one of gaming's most notorious antagonists, and Katase explained, quote, we felt it was necessary to have this very clear depiction of how he came to be the person that he is now in Rebirth, end quote. So, yeah, just wanted to continue to give you guys these updates on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. This is something that sounded uh, pretty significant. Again, we know that with Rebirth, they're making quite a few changes um, from the original and kind of twisting some things and uh, rearranging them. And this, to me, seems like one of the uh, bigger things that they're doing where they're making it clear that, yeah, Sephiroth, you're, you're going to see him a lot more and they're going to go much more in-depth with his uh, character. And that's actually uh, very cool. So, yeah, there's your update on Rebirth. But the final topic here is just something very short, but I thought I would mention it because I've seen quite a few of you in the past talking about this game, that being Little Nightmares. Apparently, it's been discovered that this game is going to be getting an enhanced edition for PS5. It says here that the Entertainment Software Ratings Board, or the ESRB, has confirmed the existence of Little Nightmares Enhanced Edition for PS5, Xbox Series consoles, and PC. The unannounced title was first outed by South Africa's rating board exactly a year ago. In the absence of an official announcement, which now seems imminent, we can only assume that this is a native current-gen version of the 2017 release that may include downloadable content with some added bells and whistles. This was first spotted by Gamatsu, um, and it you know pretty much confirms that this is happening. And so, again, I just wanted to kind of let you guys know about this because Little Nightmares is apparently a very good game. It's not one that I've played. Maybe I'll have to get around to doing so. Apparently, it's getting a native PS5 version. I guess you can let me know if that's something you're interested in. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you did find it informative. If you did, be sure to leave it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.